Welcome to the Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement Process Mapping Diagramming Tools. This is Lecture B. The objectives for this unit, Process Mapping Theory and Rationale, and Process Mapping Diagramming Tools, are to articulate the value of process mapping, describe standard process mapping symbols and conventions, analyze an existing workflow process chart in terms of the information that could be generated, and the sequence of steps that are being communicated. Choose the correct scope and detail level for a process map. Choose an appropriate process mapping methodology. Create a process map for a healthcare system or system component using correct symbols and conventions. The most important thing to remember about process diagramming is that a process diagram is a model, one representation of a process. There are multiple, often many valid representations from which to choose, and all models are wrong, i.e., a model is a representation of reality. As such, it can never encompass reality, only the part represented in the model. For example, a toy remote control car represents the shape and maybe color of the make and model after which it is fashioned. The toy also moves on wheels like the real car. However, there are many ways in which the toy is not an exact replica of the actual car. For one, it is smaller. Secondly, the toy uses AA batteries for power. Another valid representation of the actual car would be a photograph or a set of engineering drawings. A process diagram, like the toy car, picture, and engineering drawings, is only a model of the process that it represents. The analyst chooses the most appropriate diagram to represent the needed process aspects. To sell the watch at auction, the picture on the right may be the most appropriate. However, to show the inner mechanical parts, the picture on the left is probably best. Similarly, to look for potential explosive and other harmful objects, airport security uses x-rays to view the contents of luggage and packages rather than video images of the outside of the bags. Importantly, each perspective, inner workings, and outward appearance is a model of the actual item. Each represents different aspects of the item. In his book, Guide to Health Informatics, Enrico Coira makes the distinction between models as abstractions of the real world versus models used as templates. For example, a photograph or painting is one model of a house. A set of drawings is a model of different aspects of the house and is also used for a different purpose, i.e., as a blueprint for building the house. The blueprint or model is used as a template from which more houses like the one it represents can be built. The abstraction, template distinction, is based on how the model will be used. Some process diagrams are used to visualize the sequence of tasks and to identify tasks that are inefficient. This is a process diagram used as an abstraction, i.e., a representation of the process that shows the aspects that can help us identify unnecessary or wasteful steps. Other process maps are used as templates, for example, as part of software development. Using increasing levels of detail and specificity, analysts work with users and developers to elicit and document requirements that can be used by computers to generate computer programs or software to meet the requirements or as part of process improvement. Process maps for changes or new processes can be used to guide the necessary workflow changes. In examples one and two, the process maps document and model the requirements and serve as the holder of the knowledge. Process maps can be updated as needed. The knowledge resides in the model that everyone understands rather than in the computer code or in an individual's mind that few people understand. This unit provides methods to document and preserve process knowledge. A process is composed of tasks accomplished by both humans and machines. From cognitive science, we know that humans can perform both physical and mental steps or tasks. Further, we know that today, machines can only perform physical tasks, i.e., machines, even computers, cannot think like a human. However, today, we commonly use computers for information processing tasks. While the computer performs the physical manipulations on the information, interpretation and thinking remain the role of the human. 
Thus, humans interact with computers both in physical workflow and in information flow. Further, we make machines perform human-like tasks by reducing human thought into a set of conditions that a machine can recognize and a set of instructions that a machine can carry out under the conditions. Process diagramming is complicated by the intertwined nature of humans and computers in information processing. One approach to dealing with this complexity is to use different representations of processes, some that concentrate on physical steps, others that concentrate on information flow, others that depict information content, and others that represent some aspect of thinking or decisions, sometimes called flow control, i.e., how different paths in the process are chosen. Since the 1920s, Euron, 1988, and maybe earlier, flow-like diagrams have been used as representations of processes. This is a vast oversimplification, though. The fact is that there are many different aspects of both work and information processes that we may be interested in. For example, the context in which the process operates, process steps, tasks, information flow, the information content needed for the process, how the information is altered through the process, the sequence and other control of steps or tasks, and the roles involved in the process. Visually depicting a process first and foremost involves identifying the purpose of the process diagram, abstraction, or template. That is, why is the diagram needed? Then identifying the aspect, aspects of the process that we are interested in and choosing a diagram or set of diagrams that emphasizes those aspects of interest and de-emphasizes or completely eliminates from view the others. It is also important to determine the necessary level of detail. Then third, pick an appropriate style and notation to use. There are several methods and notations for diagramming or mapping the clinical workflow processes, including ISO 5807 Information Processing Diagrams, the same symbols used for flow charting, Yordan Notation for Data Flow Diagrams, Gain Sarsen Notation for Data Flow Diagrams, Unified Modeling Language, UML, that represents several different aspects of processes, and Entity Relationship, ER Diagrams, that concentrate solely on information content. These methods differ in notation used, and most importantly, the aspects of processes and information flow that each is designed to cover. In this section, we will review the process aspects that each notation covers and show an example of each type of diagram. The process aspects to be featured will determine the type of diagram to be used, i.e., the diagram that best represents the process aspects that you are interested in. The seven important process aspects are context, process steps, information flow, information content, information transformation, sequence and other control, and who or what role performs the step. The table on the following slide indicates which process aspects are covered by the notations or diagramming methods. Note. The healthcare setting in which you work may have standardized on one particular notation or method for their process representation. Further, healthcare facilities may have participated in quality improvement or software development efforts, in which case there may be existing process diagrams that may be of use to you. So while you may prefer a particular method and can select that method of use in this course, it is important to be aware of the major notations or methodologies and to understand the basic uses and notation of each. Unit 3 covers five notations that are commonly used to diagram processes. ISO 5807, Yordan, Gaines-Sarsen, UML, and DR diagrams. ISO 5807 can be used to represent process steps and their sequence and control, as well as information transformation and roles involved in the process. Yordan represents context, process steps, and information transformation. Gaines-Sarsen represents the latter two process aspects. Unified modeling language, developed a few decades after and heavily influenced by the earlier methods, was designed to represent all but the Yordan-style context diagram. The entity relationship diagram is designed to represent only information content. 
Eventually, you will need to contact a healthcare facility and set up an appointment to meet with a team to diagram the workflow process in that facility. After these instructions, pause the slides. Think through and list the steps required to contact the facility and set up the meeting. Using the basic flowchart symbols covered in Part 1 of this presentation, create a simple process flowchart. We suggest using MS Word, MS PowerPoint, or MS Visio to create your diagram. These are relatively inexpensive and widely available. However, there are many other tools that could be used. Demonstrations are available on the Microsoft website and may be listed with your course materials. Pause the slides and do the exercise now. Not all of the process aspects noted earlier are critical for the process improvement work covered here. For the healthcare workflow process improvement, we recommend the following. Yordan Data Flow Diagrams, or ISO 5807 flowcharts, process steps, step sequence, and other control diagrams, as well as roles performing the steps. Yordan Data Flow Diagrams and ISO 5807 flowcharts are covered in Unit 3. We recommend that you review these two sections carefully. The primary slides that we have just reviewed provide the concepts and background for these diagrams and simple examples. In Unit 3, we provide more detailed instructions on how to create and use the diagrams. We will also provide additional symbols that are needed to diagram more complex processes. Unit 3 covers the necessary diagrams and provides examples and practice for creating the Yordan data flow diagrams and ISO 5807 flowcharts. Examples of the other three related diagrams that the analyst is likely to encounter are also covered in Unit 3. The goal is to teach students how to read and understand these other diagrams rather than how to create them. The goal of workflow process improvement is to represent aspects of the process that can help the analyst and healthcare facility staff identify areas where the process can be improved. The diagrams recommended here meet this by concentrating on process steps data flow, roles, and visualizing the whole. There are other process aspects that are not critical to this analysis and thus will not be considered. Other efforts where these methods have been used to successfully analyze and redesign healthcare processes include the Public Health Institute's Business Process Analysis and Redesign Program, Public Health Institute, 2006, to improve the performance of the U.S. public health system. We strongly recommend that you review this reference. The Robert Woods Johnson Foundation provided a grant to the Public Health Informatics Institute to improve the performance of the U.S. public health system. As part of this effort, the Carabas Health Alliance, CBA, analyzed the process improvement through information technology introduction. This effort provides an excellent case study of using the methods described above to analyze and evaluate improvements in process and informatics for their public health department. PHI 2006. Please review this website and the process diagrams included. This concludes Lecture B. You should now be able to list the information generated or used in the process and the sequence of workflow steps when given a workflow process chart consisting of basic flowcharting symbols. Read a scenario and use basic flowchart symbols representing the process steps and their sequence. Explain two ways process diagrams are used as models. Distinguish the physical steps from information flow in a healthcare process involving an EHR. Choose an appropriate process diagram to model given aspects of a process.